Laura Hitchman from OV Power Yoga. She just uh, opened the studio in November. November 18th. Yeah. Yep. And, it, yeah. and you got it set up pretty quick because you said you just took over the place in September, right? The very last week of September I wow. signed the lease. Yeah. It, it turned over fast. Yeah. I, I had the help of some very talented people. Yeah. It's a cool space. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on again. Oh, yeah, yeah. No problem. Well, when I ran into you um, over Christmas and you told me that uh, you opened this place and, and that you were doing some interesting things down here, I thought, well, we better get you on the podcast and let everybody know what's going on. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Quite a turn of events in my life this past year. I mean, I, I moved back and it, it was not even a year and here I am opening a business. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been an amazing 12 months of my life, to say the least. So, yeah, yeah very, very excited. Yeah, that's uh, um, a lot of people think about starting a business. And, and I think um, before we get into the, like, the mm -hmm. yoga aspect, just the, the, the starting a business, that's uh, scary for a lot of people. And, and yeah. um, how did you kind of, what did it come pretty natural, the idea of starting a business? Yeah, you know. My whole fam my family's been in business for years in wheeling. Um, my grandmother started with um, a parking lot downtown, which is still in our family, and she worked that, and she moved on to be become a hotelier um, oh, wow. in town. So I don't know if you remember the old Fort Henry Motor Lodge that yeah, used to yeah. be over by Respects. That was hers. Oh, and, okay. Um, the Howard Johnson's there where the Hampton Inn sits now. Yeah. And then eventually the Hampton Inn. So, and then my dad also followed suit. So I think it's just kind of partially something I've been exposed to my whole life. Yeah. And um, I think I spent the majority of my 20s just kind of wondering, not really having any aim or goal. And uh, my 30s have been more about figuring out my steps in life and where I want to go and what really makes my heart beat. Yeah. And um, so yoga was part of that picture and I went to school for business and hospitality and kind so I think it's all together, meshing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of like all worlds collided at the right time and yeah. um, it just felt right. It just felt really good. Yeah. So that's cool. You know, yeah. Can't pass that up. You that's know? right. Yeah. And I think yeah. acknowledging when, um, when, when things are right and being able to recognize it and, and, and taking that step in that direction um, is important. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes we get the sign and, and it's waving us over and, <laughs> and, and we're, we don't want to see it or, or, or either by fear or, or just um, we're too busy. Uh, we're, not, we're not in touch with what we really want to, to go that direction. Because I think you, your story is one of uh, really listening to your heart and going mm -hmm. in that direction instead of maybe going the route that's uh, more conventional or what maybe you know, just what you had planned when yeah. you went to school. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and say that it wasn't scary and there wasn't fear sure. and, and nerves and anxiety and all of that. Like, I, I think I experienced that on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, it's how you handle it, really. You know, I roll through it instead of holding on to to something, you know, I, I think the biggest lesson I've learned throughout just starting this and owning a business for a couple of months is like, you got to roll with the punches and if yeah. you attach to something, you're never going to keep progressing. And, um, you know, it didn't, I wouldn't say I always followed my heart. That wasn't always where I was. Yeah. I kind of followed society's path, what my parents wanted sure. me to do. And, and so it's taken several years of life coaching and yoga and self-exploration and soul searching yeah. and all those good things to arrive at this spot yeah per yeah. se so what you know a lot of people talk about all the problems in the world and how society's changed and and mm -hmm. there, there there certainly are a, a lot of those things but i think one thing that's refreshing is more and more people are starting to question you know is this the life that I want and mm -hmm. what's the life that I want and starting to take steps towards living the life on their terms of what makes them happy and not what they were told right to make them happy and they value the things that that speak to them and not necessarily what society or um, what they were brought up to, to, to think of as being mm -hmm. valuable um, I know for me you know I was always told you gotta have a good job you gotta you know which you know in my parents era that was uh really important yeah that uh, generation like yeah. that's how that was their survival and it makes sense you know that the millennials and beyond like 
the world's changed so much yeah. and the technology has taken yeah. off and like if you're not really truly going after your your own passions and your heart and values yeah. then you're kind of stuck nowhere yeah. and it's kind of a waste of the technology yeah <laughs> as they said it was you know technology computers and everything were supposed to make our lives yeah. easier and it seems like people were more busy than ever but i think that's kind of a growing pains mm -hmm. and i think um you know, there are people that do podcasts and YouTube channels and they do a lot of things in media that they can do out of their home. And so for them, the technology has made their life easier and, and made uh, access to doing the kind of thing that they'd want to do possible. Um, so for, them, for, the, for the early adopters, they're already kind of being able to live that lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody else will eventually catch up and, and hopefully all this technology, uh, instead of using Facebook to uh, Y'all people and, <laughs> and, and post pictures of what we're eating for dinner. Yeah, uh, we can uh, we can find a way to, to use it to to actually make our lives easier and and, and more fulfilling and you right. Know, hopefully in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's happening. You know, there's we seem to go all in for everything. Mm -hmm. I think it's just human nature. You go all in. You're excited about something, and then years down the road, you kind of realize, okay, well, maybe somewhere in the middle grounds. And I think that same thing with social media, you see a lot of people starting to pull back, trying to scroll yeah. less, trying to be more present in the moment yeah. with their family, their friends, um, which is great, right? We're valuing better things, but we had to see the opposite side of that in order to yeah. come to that yeah, resolution. To, I agree. You have to push it to the, to the extreme. <laughs> uh, I think people yeah. like podcasts um, because they, they like people talking and they like yeah. the long form and, and the independent nature of it. And I think uh, um, what we're being fed by um, you know, national syndicated radio mm -hmm. and even national news, uh, it's so fake and contrived. And, the uh, fear mongering. And fear mongering. And, and, a little and, intense, uh, yeah. And, and they tell you what, uh, you know, you turn on the channel and they tell you what you're supposed to know. And um, podcast, you can pick through tens of thousands of them and find the ones that kind of uh, speak to you and sort yeah. through the ones that you think are BS. And Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. That's, it's a really nice thing and I think, it, you know, I spend a decent amount of time in my car now, but I used to spend a lot of time in my car for work and it's really nice to be able to select what you want to hear and, yeah. and learn instead of just always maybe playing the music or having to surf channels to find something, so. If you, if you really wanted to listen to yoga podcasts, I'm sure you could do nothing but. Oh and, my gosh, and, yeah. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't get to be able to keep up with all of them, which is kind of cool that you can, you know, specialize yeah. stuff to your interest. And, yeah. and, and I think that people are, um, more and more people are getting interested in yoga and mm -hmm. gardening mm -hmm. and uh, camping. And yeah. um, I, think, I think that's the pushback from all the social medias that they, they yeah. want things that they can do with their hands and uh, the whole DIY movement of uh, any any kind of DIY oh, stuff. Oh, DIY. I can give you an earful on DIY. <laughs> <laughs> I get myself in trouble when I see a DIY video. I want to call it don't DIY, you know, <laughs> because if you don't have some knowledge, yeah. I mean, I got myself into some holes with this space, honestly, just thinking I could yeah. watch a few videos and, and learn how to do some of these skills yeah. that you don't realize how skilled people like carpenters and contractors right. and all this, how skilled they really are. So Yeah, I've, I've definitely um, learned that, that it's harder than it is, uh, than it looks in the video. Uh, yeah. and, and you really have to, if it's, you know, the videos are a good start to anything, but then um, to get to where the person in the video is, you have to keep doing it and practice. And yeah. um, if you want to be good, you're going to have to dedicate some time to it. Your yeah. first project isn't going to look like the video, no, right? No, yeah. right, right. Yeah. They, they, um, there was a good, I don't know if it's a proverb or what it was, but they were talking about uh, pottery class. They find, Maybe it would actually happen. But they divided it into two, and they had a week. And one group was to make as many pots as they could in a uh -huh. week. And the other one was to just make one really good pot. And at the end of the week, um, the group that made as many as they could had the five five really good pots that were better than the one good one because they did so many that after a while they just naturally got good. And sense. I thought that was a um, that was a really good simple way to to Very. illustrate you know that, that it's practice. I'm sure people come yeah. here all the time and they can barely you know move yes. if they've never done yoga before and and. Yeah. 
I constantly get the comment, you know, I'm so out of shape. I just realized how much, how inflexible I am and, and these, all these comments. And, and my reaction to that is to just let people speak their mind and also to let them know that like, that's where everyone starts, yeah. right? Yeah. Anything you do, yoga, um, throwing pots, yeah. you know, knitting, whatever that your, your passion is, it takes practice. Yeah. It's anything in life takes practice. And I think we're, we're pulling the technology into that and the DIY and all that because you can teach yourself how to do most things in life. You know, it just, it's not going to happen overnight. Right. And so I try to have, to have, help people have patience with their yoga yeah. practice and to keep coming to their mat a couple, three times a week when they're new, just to learn and, and, you know, get the body loose. Yeah. yeah. Get the body loose. And us yoga teachers, we have this flowery language and it's yeah. very out here ethereal and yeah. esoteric and all this stuff. And so, um, just getting used to that yeah. for somebody that's new to the practice. But that was something that drew me to sure. yoga. I loved that. I was like, Oh my God, it's so pretty. Like, the words and the way you put it all together and the movement and all that so it, it is a nice uh break from everything else in society no phones it's calm yeah. it's quiet it's 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 peaceful and it's it's nice like there's mm -hmm. no angst to it and uh, right. that's what i always liked about it that anything else that's going on in your life and world it's you come and get centered mentally yep. as much as physically which is that's where yoga began anyhow mm -hmm. was the uh, pre preparation for meditation, right? Isn't that yeah. The, the yogis kind of developed the physical part of it out of the greater... Yeah, so the physical, it all kind of comes together, right? So yoga or yoke or union mm -hmm. is to bring your mind, body, and soul into union, right? So we spend a lot of time up here in our yeah. heads, thoughts bouncing around between our ears, just um, kind of going nuts, right? All day long, bouncing from one thing to the next, just working on autopilot. And so something I like to teach and that the other teachers here will as well, is to, when you come into the space, you leave all of that outside. Yeah. The external world stays outside. You're here to be here, to be in your body, to move, to sweat, to breathe with each other. Yeah is to share in that community space. Um, yoga's so much about community. Even you're not even speaking to each other, but you can hold that space in the room. And power yoga in particular is about heat and energy and movement. And so we do a ton of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of sweat being flung around in there. And um, the more people, the better, because it's a high energy type of yeah. thing. Um, and a lot of people, I think, you know, I want to be careful about what I say, but I think that some people have this tendency to think that power yoga, if you've never done yoga, is going to be an unattainable thing. Yeah. However, our brains are so like wound tight yeah. and we're, we're spinning out basically. There's so much stimulus coming out of us day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour that coming to a yoga practice or a meditation practice that's slow and methodical that takes a lot yeah. of practice, yeah. right? Like you, t you got to build that, that, right? So when you can come to something where your body moves a little bit and bring in more of the physical meditation or asana, yeah. right? That's just the physical part of it. Um, it helps you to learn that meditation through the movement. Yeah. And that's how I got to this, you know, like I need that and I still need it. And I have a hard time sitting still. And like, <laughs> I'm not a person that can sit and, and meditate in a corner for an hour or yeah. I mean, maybe three minutes. Like that's my <laughs> max. Right. But I do spend a lot of time daily closing my eyes, just randomly shutting out the world just for 60 seconds, a yeah. couple minutes. It doesn't take a lot. But if you can get fully present, separate yeah. from your thoughts. Just That's a little the work. reset. That's yeah. the work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, um, I, I haven't had a chance to do a lot of yoga, but mm -hmm. when I have done it, well, um, what I liked is that, that it seemed like when you're starting out, you can still do the poses. You just don't do them maybe as you're not stretching as much as other people. But yeah. um, but, but anybody can, can literally do yoga, right? They can come in and, and mm -hmm. you do. It's always to your ability. You right. don't necessarily have to bend like a pretzel the first day, and and um, we till you you get comfortable with the movements and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, 
it, it, everybody works at their own level, I, I imagine. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think that's one of the things that has always spoken to me. Um, it can be intimidating to walk into a yoga studio. I was there, yeah. right? You don't know anyone. It's kind of intense. You're not sure what to expect. And the postures can be a bit vulnerable at times. Um, and so if you have teachers or instructors or studios that are holding that space for you to do your own practice, to do whatever you think you're supposed yeah. to do without comparing yourself to the person next to you, yeah, right? That's the goal almost is yeah. like you're not here to – it's not like – you know, working out at, at the gym or at CrossFit or something like that, yeah. and there's no competitive edge to it. Yeah. So you're just there together to, to move and breathe and share in the experience. Um, and it is all levels all the time. Yeah. So I especially here offer that every single class we teach to your level. So beginner to advanced students, same class. Yeah. There's options for everyone. Yeah. They, I know I was always told that, you know, you, it's not that you're not supposed to copy me. Just keep the right form and just... To right. whatever your body can do, and 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 yeah. When I did it regularly, which was for about you know six months, but uh -huh. um, I did after a while. I was amazed at how much better I got and how yeah. much more flexible I got. And um, isn't that cool? It happens so fast. It does. Right? It does. Mm -hmm. And and um, you get to work on your balance, which I liked. And, and yeah. Um, one thing I noticed because I do go to a gym is that is that. Um, Flexibility, especially as you get older, is probably more important than just about anything else physically right. because uh, being able to bend over and pick up a pencil happens more often than having to pick up cinder blocks. You know, unless you have a job <laughs> yeah. like that, how often you, do you right. really need to squat down and pick up a couch? You yeah. Know? But um, and it's good to be physically strong and have powerful legs and have a body that allows you to do stuff. But if you don't have flexibility, that strength is yeah. wasted. Your stability, right, as yeah. you get older is yeah. is really important. That's where we see uh, people, the older generations, hurting themselves and breaking hips and things because you lose your agility yeah. and your balance. And your balance, right? yeah. Your and, balance. And, and um, definitely keeping your body, you know, I kind of got out of working out there for a while and then I just recently started again because um, I had to think about what kind of person do I want to be when I get mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Kind of at a crossroads if i stop working out now and and uh, because i don't do really well just at home working out or, or yeah. just natural i have an office job so um i don't want to be somebody that's stuck having to sit in a chair all day when i'm 80 i want to be like my dad and still out gardening and cutting yes. the grass and changing his own tires and whatever else it, it, yeah. is he gets into at 85 years old and um you want to have quality of life absolutely. at that age and doing regular day-to-day -day yeah. things with ease yeah and, um, and, and a lot of it is um, recognizing uh, the difference between short-term and long-term goals and, and rewards mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know any kind of uh, thing that you do to make yourself healthy for a couple hours a day um, is, is a sh small price to pay to feel good the rest of the day and and on into the future and, yeah. and um, but that you don't necessarily get the reward that second, and, and that's a little bit harder for people to grasp. Right. Yeah. It's not instantaneous. Yeah. Well, and it's understandably, you know, I understand because I'm that way, and every single thing that we want is basically at our fingertips yeah. within a second. So if you have to work towards something, yeah. you know, it's peop our mindsets are to get frustrated and overwhelmed yeah. and upset and, and then throw in the towel. Yeah. Instead of taking some time, putting it down, you know, maybe coming back to it later. It took me a long time to kind of wrap my brain around right. that concept as well. I'm on the brink of the millennial generation, and I think we really, the millennials are really that generation that yeah. has started to kind of suffer from that yeah. instantaneous satisfaction epidemic, yeah, I should yeah. call it, right? It, it is, and, and, and I also think that um, I've kind of had this thought recently I think we're pleasure-seeking animals, you know, yeah. human beings, and and um, but there's always going to be adversity in life. So I try to, you know, manufacture ad adversity uh, on my own terms, so that when actual adversity comes, I can handle it better. Uh, we went uh, 
camping uh, yeah. right before Christmas and it was freezing cold and we were in a little little Anirondack shelter and it was uh -huh. probably about a mile through the snow carrying everything um, in the woods and, and um, that's a mental challenge it was a mental challenge and yeah. actually I went with Ryan Norman yeah he, uh, I saw the photo yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and people said you're crazy you know why, why would you want to do that and it, <laughs> Not that it was, it wasn't, it was uncomfortable, crazy, right? it, was, it was cold, but when I have to walk across the cold parking lot to get from my car to work, yeah, it's no big deal. If I have to park at the bottom of the hill to, to get up my brother's driveway, well, I mean, I, I still don't like it, but it's nothing compared to walking a mile carrying a backpack plus groceries into yeah. the woods to sleep in a, to a place that you have to light a fire before you can even get comfortable. Um, Were you on the Appalachian Trail? Where did uh, you guys go? I think it was a different trail. It's, okay. It's, but it's, um, uh, yeah, I forget what, what the, what the okay. name it was. I just kind of jumped in on that trip, which was awesome. That's, that's usually what I do. I hear someone's going to do something like that. And I'm like, can I go? Because I usually don't have time to plan and organize. Um, well, that's really cool that yeah. you can do that. I think it's something that I've been wildly surprised by is the, the welcoming of the friendly city, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, in my head, when I moved back, you know, I had high school on my brain because that's the right. last time I really lived here, and it's nothing like that. And everybody is, I feel like Wheeling's very open, open arms to to everyone coming back to town, opening businesses, whatever you're doing. So that's great that you can just tag along oh, on yeah. a camping trip. Yeah, mm -hmm. people cool. people are very friendly, very yeah. open. Uh, I know when I got out of high school and I left town and I didn't think there was much here for me and it was definitely a different vibe and um, a lot of my friends that, that moved away and never came back they kind of curious why I would want to live here and right. I tell them it's, it's not the same as when we were kids right um, it's it's definitely had a renaissance and I don't know if that's the same all over the country or if it's just here but uh, I know a lot of younger people that they they did come here they came back mm -hmm. home right after college. They didn't have any desire to leave. That um, it's, they found it to be welcoming and comfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's something. There's value to that. Yeah. And um, I was actually because you were discussing just um, longevity, really, and yeah. and being able to um, be 86, 87 years old, and and functioning well enough that you you have quality of life and happiness. And, um, I was going to ask you if you are familiar with the blue zone living, no. um, which is, it's just like this really cool concept and kind of unknowingly I've been building this lifestyle that aligns with it. Really? So yeah. Um, so there's nine blue zones around the world. And in these blue zones, there are more people living to be centenarians than anywhere else in the world. Um, but they're doing it in a way where they feel happy and healthy. And, yeah. you know, they, they're probably still struggling with things like arthritis yeah. and, you know, it's natural deterioration of the body. But they're able to manage without taking in a whole list of prescription right. medications. And they, so some of the qualities of that and the main reasons why they are living so much longer is purpose yeah. and a healthy diet mediterranean diet in particular is it's a big deal um family connections community so coming back to a small town yeah. right and building that community and having that love and that comfort goes a long way towards your longevity in yeah. your life um and that's exactly why i moved back because my health was shit. Yeah. And I said, screw it, I'm done. I can't manage my life on my yeah. own. I don't care how old I am, and I, and it's helped. The underlying stress of living in a big city, I think most people don't realize that, that it's there when they're living there, and it's not until you get out yeah. that you, you realize that, that you know. And then, yes, being like my family, yeah. uh, my dad lives between me and my brother, and my brother lives like two miles away. So we're all right there in that little cluster, and mm -hmm. I, I like that we're close together. Yeah. And I like that I don't have to sit through a bunch of red lights. And, yeah. and I like that I don't, you know, every day when I lived in the city, going to and from work, luckily I lived downtown and worked in the suburbs, so I didn't have the same traffic other people did. But mm -hmm. that idea of, you know, every now and then I'll go up to Pittsburgh, and every day you're sitting in traffic. And um, to a certain extent, I think people get used to it, but that's not. Certainly for me, that's not how I would want to live there. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no advantages um, to living there that would make me want to 
suffer through that. Um, right. I mean, like you have your time is so much more valuable yeah. than sitting in a car and commuting yeah. an hour each day or yeah. it, of, of anything that, that a city would have to offer me. Um, I think I could just go up there and do it. And then, I mean, I love going up to Pittsburgh. I'm going yeah. up on Saturday, but yeah. my favorite thing about it is when I'm done doing whatever I want to do, I come back home to the country Yeah. and I live, you know, pretty out there now, but I, I mm-hmm. uh, my plans are to get even farther out into the country. Really? Yeah. And, okay. um, um, so th- the, the zones that you're talking about, mm-hmm. um, I know that, uh, Warner Herzog did a, uh, a, a short film or no, I think it was maybe a feature length film. Uh, and it was, about, I think it was called happy people. And it was uh-huh. these people that lived up in the frozen tundra oh, and, wow. um, you know, basically didn't have a lot in hard conditions and they were just really happy. You know, they, they, um, most of what they did was for their own survival and uh-huh. and they of course being in harsh conditions in a small community you have to band together so your family is pretty much everybody in your community and uh, and they eat healthy because they don't have processed food shipped mm-hmm. in and most people would look at it and go why would anybody want to live way up there in near the uh, the arctic circle mm-hmm. and but, but they're happy. They're happy people. They're happy people, yeah. Right? And it's not about the, the amount of stuff that you can collect in your life. It's about living this quality of life. And I, you know, for me personally, um, I, I'm, I feel fortunate. I'm lucky to have found a life coach and discovered what that was all about and actually work with yeah. somebody to help me build a purpose, like an actual statement yeah. about my purpose in this life, right? And so this is me living my purpose, this studio, bringing these concepts, these ideas back to my hometown and um, helping people. So part of that Blue Zone Living is doing chores, actually. That is actually really good mentally um, for our bodies. Yeah. Um, just, just everyday tasks. You brought up gardening, yeah. you know, mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, taking care of things gives you a sense of yeah. purpose. That's so funny that you you mention that because maybe I'm I'm there too because my one of my favorite things to do if I'm not doing a podcast uh-huh. on Thursday mornings you know it's the end of my work week is Wednesday so um, I usually go to the grocery store on Wednesday night and then Thursday morning I cook uh-huh. and I I do my dishes that mm-hmm. I neglected for the three twelve hour shifts that I work <laughs> and, and and just I love being in my kitchen and yeah. put on a podcast and water the plants. And just get get everything all nice mm-hmm. and organized, and I don't mind at all. Do the laundry. I I get in this zone, especially um, this time of year when there's not other things I'd rather be doing outside. I can I can be in there all day, and I even sometimes invent tasks that I you know I I, I make my kombucha and stuff like that. And I'll I'll spend you make all day, your own kombucha. I make my own kombucha, and I uh, need to learn about this. Cause yes, I've I I've been buying and drinking a lot of it. I think it's been helping me digestively, but I would rather make it. Yes, and water kefir. I can I can uh, hook you up on that. I'm, I've tried the kefir before. <laughs> I don't know how much. <laughs> I. I have like my little food lab and, yeah. and even I even got into making sourdough bread. I was eating too much of it, so I haven't made it in a while, but um, th- that with process. With the kefir water or how do you, with? Uh, no, actually I cultivated my own cultures uh-huh. um, in, in my kitchen. I used a couple different kinds of flowers because it was an experiment. So um, I wanted to see if I could do it and, and you, you flower on water and every day you add a little bit more and you basically just let it set out and ferment and and lo and behold it happens ginger beer um, wow. uh, all these different uh, things I made up I when I went on the the winter camping trip yeah. I took um, a fermented pineapple I guess it'd be maybe considered a pineapple wine but it was pineapple and cayenne pepper and you let it ferment and then it gets a little bit of alcohol in it yeah <laughs> um, and, and I'm actually we're going is it the, spicy yeah. From the cayenne? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I, you know, not terribly because I just drop a whole pepper in the bottle okay. and then just just leave it. And the longer it sits there. It so that's how you all kept warm when yeah, you were yeah. hiking? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but so I, I really look forward to doing my, these chores and to, you know, chopping up vegetables and I'll put on a big bowl. It's big exciting, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's relaxing and exciting. And, and I think that um, that lifestyle where you're, the work that you're putting in is directly um, related to um, your life, you know. So I think that home, people like homesteading because 
if you spend all day, instead of going to a job, you're working in your garden and then you're building, you know, your facility to get water into your, mm -hmm. your property and, and you're, you're fixing the fence for your animals or whatever you're doing, all your efforts are directly going into keeping you alive and to sustaining mm -hmm. you. And instead of, um, you know, most of us, we have jobs that we go to. It's this kind of thing outside of our own life. You know, you step mm -hmm. out of your, away from your family and your life and you're around strangers, which is not always a bad thing, but think about how much time people spend away from their family to be at work. And they spend more, they spend 40 mm -hmm. hours a week with the people at work. Um, and then the time at home, half the time they're sleeping. Um, so you're doing this thing that really might benefit society. I work at a hospital, mm -hmm. but, but you're doing this thing that doesn't directly affect you. And then you're getting paid in money and anymore, it's not even money that you hold in your hand. It's a number in a bank account mm -hmm. that you then use to buy food that someone else made and it comes in a package and we're very disconnected from all this stuff. It's all, um, I don't know, I almost, it's kind of like out in the air, you know, there's not a, that direct connection. Uh, you know, my grandma, they raised chickens and she would butcher the chicken and as gross as some people might think that's, that is, it was way more humane than the way they do it in factories right. and, and the whole family, they knew what they were eating right? and, and they did, they weren't, they weren't it's looking the best at, quality control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you don't think of uh, meat as just something that comes in a package. You don't think of, uh, think of vegetables as something that, yeah. that comes in a can or right. a bag um, or even from the grocery store, but you mm -hmm. see it grow. When you yeah. see it, I, that's what I like about gardening is you put these little plants in the ground and then next thing you know, you look over and they're like up to your waist and then they're up to your shoulders and you start to see these green tomatoes. The next thing you know, you're eating stuff that you grew out of your mm -hmm. garden. And I think that's why people like gardening. Um, is that well, you're touching nature. I think, you know, personally, I don't have a green thumb. My mother has that <laughs> thumb, and I, I've tried, but uh, I, I tend to, to kind of walk around. To, uh, it's something I work on, being more observant of my surroundings because I'm so used to being like this on my phone yeah. or with my head down or on a computer. But, you know, um, the part of that that I love is just to walk in the garden in my bare feet or put my hands in the yeah. dirt or feel the cold ground or smell the fruit like the fresh tomatoes there's a smell yeah. that you get you're not gonna ever smell that from a tomato yeah. at the store and so your senses are heightened and just the connection to the earth like we're from the yeah. earth you know yeah. like we're all just energy just beings kind of yeah. swirling around each other but we've lost let that connection yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's really beneficial to your health to have Absolutely. all that just yeah. to root. Yeah, that's, that's why I, I really enjoy camping. I think it's the most natural thing in the world for people to you know, sleep in a pretty modest shelter and sit around a campfire. Yeah. And sitting around the fire is what human beings did for hundreds yeah. of thousands of years yeah. and, um, and had pretty basic sh temporary shelters. And, and that's um, innate to us. I think we're drawn to to the fire and and i think mm, we need yes. to be near the nature and we're drawing the drawing fire and fire. water we are mm. um why that is i'm not sure but i know that we are and i think yeah. it's good to be around those things and uh, waking up in the tent in the rain <laughs> is yeah. is it it's kind of a neat feeling you it's something that people should experience mm -hmm. and you have to get out and tear the tent down because you're leaving that day but that's <laughs> kind of a pain <laughs> but um so uh, fire and water, you know, like that, that, that power, right, is the fire, yeah. the flame inside you. We talk about that a lot in here, right? Power oh, yoga goes oh, okay. back to yeah. fire. Um, so my training is uh, Baptiste, Baron Baptiste is the um, founder of the style of yoga that I was trained in, um, which is the power yoga, it's a vinyasa style yoga, but the, some of the concepts or one of the, the main principles is tapas or heat or fire. Um, and, and yes, the studio is heated to 90 degrees, but your fire is inside. Yeah. It's inside you and it's burning. And, and so you're building this power, this courage to show up to the practice to your life. Um, and so we move and we sweat and there's more of that heat. Yeah. But the style of the yoga itself has a lot of flow. 
So there's the water as fluid, yeah. right? It's light on your joints, easy on your body, um, makes you feel light. And um, I'm also a Pisces, yeah. and I also have this Me like. Too. Are you? Yeah, When's yeah. your birthday? March 19th. Um, 14th. Did we talk about this last time? We maybe did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're like a few days apart. That's, <laughs> That's really right. cool. So I have this like water, this flow, this like energy there. I'm very much a Pisces, like to a T if yeah. you look at it. But I also have this like extreme heat and need to move and constantly be going and kind of yeah. chaos. So I think those two things, learning how it's almost like a struggle sometimes. The yin and yang. Yeah, 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 it really is. And I pull in opposite directions. And so trying to kind of find that that balance, that weave. And I think that's probably a big reason this style of yoga has spoken to me so much because it pulls all that, weaves it together for me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So fire and water, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Opposites that attract, you and know? It, and, it's, and it's been with us since the beginning of time, right? Yeah. It, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I've always, uh, for a long time, been interested in the the hot yoga and the mm -hmm. power yoga. Um, I listen to Joe Rogan; and he talks come. about it all the time. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, <laughs> just talking about it makes me excited. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to the heat that I've been researching mm -hmm. lately. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was talking the other day about building um, a sauna in my house. Oh, you should you should do it I, if you have the means to do it. Do it. Yeah, I think I I there's pretty simple plans that you can mm -hmm. do for a pretty basic one but uh there's a lot of health benefits that i never yes. i thought that people just did it to open their pores and everything but uh, you release all these heat shock proteins that are really regenerative and and um and and they're very healing and um that and, and cold water therapy which um i didn't know about either so mm -hmm. there you have the heat and the water um yeah. that are both and, yeah and both of those therapies that uh, people use those um and they're not uh, only good for you physically, but mentally. They, mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this thing <laughs> again. It's people, all this stuff I do. A lot of people where I think I'm crazy, but when I get down in the shower in the morning, I turn the water on cold. Too cold. And yeah. I just sit there. And there's stuff. a there's terminology for that, and I can't remember what it is, but um, just kind of acclimate yourself to the cold water. Um, it's it is really good. I do this too, actually, and I don't go all the way to the extreme. I kind of work myself there, but yeah. and, and maybe not in the winter. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it, it, it is a, a, a little tougher in the winter for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it, and, but just if you think about it vascularly, you know what heat does. You know, your, but yeah. your body swells naturally, and then you kind of bring it back down and cool it and let the blood flow a little bit more. So yeah, and and, and uh, mentally. Um, the way it was ex explained, to, to, not to me personally, but that, that I had heard it explained, was that uh, imagine you fall into a river or, uh -huh. or a body of water in the cold and um, your body releases all this uh, endorphins so that you can survive and all this, you know, that, that adrenaline rush that you get, uh -huh. um, it improves your mood. I know that, that um, especially if, if I do a workout and then when I'm showering at the gym, I hit that and man, I walk out of there. I feel like a million bucks from the mm. the high of the workout and then that that rush and uh, for a couple seconds of you know you breathe really deep and and you almost hyperventilate and you get a <laughs> chill down your body. But then you, oh you get that rush of energy and there's probably uh -huh. a little bit of adrenaline in there as well. And um, I, I just right before I do it because I never really want to do it. I just remind myself it's you know a minute of discomfort will will make me feel better throughout the whole day. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, like if there's, if you're feeling down, if you're unmotivated, if there's one simple thing that doesn't cost anything that you can do, and that's when you get out of the shower in the morning, sit under the cold water for, for not, it doesn't even have to be more than 20 seconds, just mm -hmm. enough for you to get that, that shiver. Uh, most people don't take me up on it. I don't think they, <laughs> they, they, they want to do it, but um, I, I like trying those different things and, and yeah and, I mean why not what is the worst that's gonna happen from that yeah. you're just gonna be cold you're gonna be cold yeah yeah and there's a, even a theory that says that mm -hmm. uh, um, when you cool your body down like that the, that gets your furnace going and, and actually will warm you mm -hmm. up um, I know my dad he grew up on a farm they drank soup or they ate soup in the summer for lunch because it was meant to cool you down mm -hmm. and, and I 
I didn't really or hot it. coffee or hot coffee yeah. yeah yeah I learned about that when I was traveling in South America and then that you know in the middle of the day and it's seeming hot everybody was trying to shove hot drinks and soup at me yeah. same thing and yeah. I was you know I was young and, and naive and didn't know anything but um yeah that same concept and you know I drink hot things all all year round yeah, and too. I drink room temperature water and I don't you know yeah. um yeah yeah so, I guess when anyway. you drink uh, cold water then your body rushes to heat it up so it actually kicks up your furnace so in mm-hmm. the summer drinking a cold drink versus like room temperature water um, it makes your systems work harder yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so and it, I've got digestive issues so I'm like you, whatever I can do to make sure my system is not working hard yeah yeah right yeah. and, and um, have you tried fasting do you do any fasting um, not really. I mean, it's kind of hard with what I, you know, doing this for a living and everything. Yeah. I, I, um, no, I love to eat. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> so I, I, I struggle quite a bit with my food regimen and, um, just because my diseases and things like that kind of just affect my appetite. Sure. But, um, I've been working really hard the last couple of weeks, um, working to, towards more of a, a vegetarian diet. Yeah. Um, I need a lot of protein, so I, I'm not going to completely nix, nix animal meat um, and definitely not eggs, but I have noticed a, a very big difference um, just in how I feel yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Now, I, what I've also realized is I'm not eating enough food. Yeah. Um, I was like, man, why am I so tired? And I'm not feeling very hungry, yeah. but my energy is lower because I'm eating more fruit and vegetables and those things you need to eat a little bit more. But no, fasting, I, I don't really yeah. do it. Um, maybe inadvertently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm not feeling good, I don't I don't really eat. Maybe one meal per day sometimes. But yeah. Yeah, Which some people do on purpose. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Well, I think there's benefits to fasting. I, I, I think that, like anything, human nature is to take it to the extreme. Yeah. Um, I, I do like that there's so many um, different theories out there on what's healthy. Um, it's a little bit hard to sort through it sometime. Uh, I, I always go back to the, to the basics, less processed yeah. food and, and yeah. more real food. Um, if it and, comes in a box, don't buy it. You yeah. Know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it's, you know, fruit, if it's got ingredients on the outside, yeah. Yeah. I, anything that has one ingredient, is, yeah. and right. then make it yourself. Yeah. yeah. And it, that's hard to do, you know. I mean, we do live in a world of convenience, and you know, we're all busy, busy running around doing one thing to the next, and so that's challenging. But yeah, you can, I, you can make it happen if you really want it. I agree. I, I, I've had a lot of people tell me that uh, eating healthy is more expensive, which I think if you buy your basic ingredients and you cook for yourself, it's not. I think um, what it costs you those time because it does you know yeah. to. to find recipes and to take the time to cook everything and, and mm-hmm. that does uh, it's a lot harder uh, but I think I always say a uh, big thing of celery is like a buck twenty yeah I mean <laughs> you know, at what cost you know what I mean like yeah. yes like monetarily maybe you're spending a few extra dollars yeah. but you know buy in season but you know you're you're costing yourself your health yeah. by eating mac cheese and pizza yeah. and all this stuff this processed food that comes from the center part of the store and you know i'm guilty of it too I, there's certain things i love that oh, i don't want to get rid of but um what's the cost like down the road your health care costs all that yeah. kind of stuff is that's going to spike so what, where you want to spend your dollars yeah yeah i and guess <laughs> I, 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 I think that a lot of times the when people try to eat healthy their grocery bill goes way up because they're still buying way too much of the other stuff at the same time, and, mm. and so if you if you buy both, then it, it is real expensive. Yeah. I buy, you know, mostly the I try to buy mostly the healthy stuff, but I'm the same way. There's some things that I like mm-hmm. that I treat myself to that are from the center, and and I think that's okay, and you know, everything in moderation, right. and um, yeah. and you have to enjoy your life, and and I I try to 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 do that. But you know, I also try to make sure that I'm walking that line of not overdoing it. And, right. Um, so the um, ex- explain a little bit more about what what you do here. Oh, what we do here. Oh man, um, <laughs> you really have to come experience class. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, 
So you said it's 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees. Yeah. The room is 90. So all the classes, there's 14 classes on the schedule weekly, okay. and um, we're closed on Mondays, but um, that will change down the road. <laughs> so I'm looking for teachers, so if anybody's a teacher that's listening, <laughs> let me know. Um, yeah, so um, there's there's four different styles of classes on this schedule. So I've got Power 60, Power 75, Core 360, and then a Power Foundations class. So the first two, the 60 and 75, is just a general power class. It's just the timing is okay. different, so 60 or 75 minutes. The core class hits all sides of your core. So it kind of incorporates some Pilates mm -hmm. concepts. Um, lots of plank. I love uh. plank. That was the hardest pose for me. <laughs> yeah. And um, it wasn't until a couple years ago where I, where I really started to enjoy the challenge yeah. that plank offered to my body. I've never... Never in my life was I able to do a push-up growing up, yeah. and so that was a pose I was afraid of, yeah. and now I relish in it, and I just yeah. love it, so you could do a lot of that. Um, and in all different variations, we do side plank, forearm plank, regular plank, yeah. whatever, backwards plank, I don't even know what that is, but um, so that core class really hits all sides of the core, so we do a lot of back bending, a lot of oblique work, the front side, and it also incorporates the vinyasa flow. So you still get the flow aspect of the, of the regular power style class, yeah. as well as the added core. And it's, um, it's at beat, we listen to R-rated music, <laughs> and we just go balls to the wall. It's kind of the thought process there. Um, and then the uh, Power Foundations class is not heated to 90, it's around 80, 82. Mm -hmm. And so that class I'm recommending for people that have either never been, never taken yoga, never been to power yoga, or if they've been doing it for a while but are still kind of uncertain or just want to go a little bit slower with less heat. So it's always kind of good to, to obviously, you know, yeah. walk yourself into something. If you're like me and you're just like, nope, I'm just going gung-ho for the yeah. whole thing, That's you know, right. come. Because all the classes, they all, I can, we can teach to any level. Yeah all the time. Um, the t teachers are very talented and, and able to speak to you where you're at. And again, like we were talking, it's about your process in the practice. It's not about doing what the people are doing next to you. So um, that's kind of what, what we do here. And, um, you know, I had some really amazing mentors in my life and where I did my training in Charleston, uh, Charleston Power Yoga, the, the owners of that studio really held space for every single student that walked through that door yeah. and, and they taught me from day one and I, I want to say I practiced for four years there before I decided to do teacher oh, really? training wow. mm -hmm. and uh, you know every year I was like I really want to do that but I was so scared yeah. there was so much fear around it and finally I, I remember that was the last night that you could sign up for it and I missed the $500 discount whatever you know <laughs> like because I was there was so much fear but I finally did sign up for it but I really learned a lot from them and something that I was taught at that studio from not only the owners but just every teacher that taught there go in every your, the answers are inside you yeah. you know and if you can figure out how to go in to stay to to kind of bleed through it, um, the fire, to be yeah. in the fire, the flame, if, even if it's uncomfortable, like you stay and um, kind of learn about yourself, your emotions, and, and you come out on the other side. And um, something I, I wrote that's kind of on, been on my brain, it's just like, you don't come out on the other side unscathed, right? Yeah. You come out with some battle wounds yeah. and that's okay, some scars and different things and um, kind of just wear your life on the outside, I think is Support. something. Yeah, and it's it's something I've been working with because it's that tendency to, to hide and hold and protect yeah. everything that's vulnerable and painful for us. And what I've learned through yoga, through all of that from my mentors and from my own life experience is that the more I share, the more I put out, yeah. the the better that is for society, right? So the, there's my way to give back, to help people to be vulnerable and comfortable with yeah. that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it is, I like we said, you know, you're scared, but you still do it. And, yeah. and, and I, I think that we all have our comfort zones. And I think um, the less that you push against that comfort zone, it's like a balloon that wants to shrink. 
Mm-hmm. And the more you do things outside your comfort zone, the bigger it gets to the point where things don't make you uncomfortable. It takes a lot to make you uncomfortable. You got to go to the next level. You got to go to the next level. And if yeah. you, you know, um, but if you don't, it, it shrinks and yeah. you get to the point where you're never comfortable, um, even in your own skin. And I think that, 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 yeah, and then you, what it, happens, right? That yeah. anxiety is so extreme. Terrible. Yeah. Right? This is where we come with all these social yeah. anxieties. And I, you know, people younger than me, I, I feel like I see so much more social anxiety oh, wow. than oh, I wow. used to. And everybody yeah. kind of wants to, to yeah. close off and protect. It's yeah. just human nature and, to do that. But. And then rather than trying to alleviate that you know work work that out so that they're not as anxious they shelter themselves and Mm -hmm. and then it just gets worse and worse and worse and I think that um, that facing these things that 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 scare you um, you know whenever I come up with a new thing that 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 I that bothers me I make a point to actually go after it and then it's not as bad you know I before I, I'm a volunteer firefighter, I'm not as active as mm-hmm. I used to be, but I know before I started, I always had to know who's going to be there, where are we going, when are we leave it, mm-hmm. what, what, what are the parameters always of need everything. Always to be in control of it. Of everything, yeah. yeah. And you know, now that siren goes off and you get in the back of an ambulance, you don't even maybe necessarily can't even see where you're going. You have zero control. You have zero control and you get there and there's a situation that's very intense, not all the time, but a lot of time very intense. That, you have to deal with and you learn to just rely on your training and yourself and the more you do that the more you're comfortable with you know I remember one time we going to a fire and I'm like looking out the window and listening on the radio and what's going on and everything and I just remember being like really you know at peace for the first time going whatever it is I trust these guys and I trust mm-hmm. myself and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll deal with it whatever it is it's not gonna be easy but we'll deal with it and then yeah and and then you lay in bed after one of those things and you feel like, you know, I mean, you feel sad for the people mm-hmm. and their loss or whatever, but um, that, that you accomplished something, um, you dug within yourself mm-hmm. and, and saw a side of yourself that you didn't know was there. And that's really empowering and that sticks with you for a long time. And so the, the more things that, that I could personally do that make me nervous um, and, and I still push through, the less things make me nervous you know you, know, you want to go camping out and I'm like yeah let's go I'm like I oh, it's gonna be cold my feet are gonna be cold it's gonna be uncomfortable I have no idea of, you know what what kind of thing this is gonna even be and and, um, and I'm like well, it'll be fine you know mm-hmm. even if it's if it's miserable it's miserable it's not forever <laughs> and, you know when I we went to, it's not forever it ends it's yeah it all ends yeah. like I, I say sometimes like in the morning like this was the hardest thing was getting out of your bed putting your coat on and driving your butt down here yeah. because it's really truly like it's not an easy class yeah. but that's the uncomfortable part yeah. right is yeah. waking yourself up and getting your body going to get there um, it yeah. ends yeah and, and, and it is as hard as it is to get yourself here and and go through the class when you walk out that's the opposite of how great you feel yeah. that you had that you did it, and I'm sure anybody that comes in and does this before they go to work, they walk into work and they're like, "Yeah, I did power yoga before yeah. I came in here. What'd you do?" Exactly, <laughs> and not in a mean way, but, oh, but yeah. you feel like you accomplished something. You start, especially I like working out in the morning because yeah. I feel like, man, I accomplished something today. That mm-hmm. The rest of the day, if I don't do anything else, I did that. Yeah, and you've got, you've already got your brain working in a positive direction yeah. and synapsing and doing all the things it needs to do to get your energy going and focused and. And you're right. Once you walk in the door and you get started, yeah. that, and especially if you do, kind of get into a routine, um, it's really not as crazy mm-hmm. as as it would, people would think to get out of bed in the morning and come and do power yoga or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic way to start your day. I love that 6 a.m. time slot. It's my favorite class to teach. I'm a morning person through and through. I'm like 2 o'clock, it's time for a nap. Yeah, you me know? too. So um, it, it, it really gets me jazzed and going. And um, the energy is different at that time of day. The Absolutely. world's quiet. Yeah. It's kind of a really beautiful thing to experience yeah. in the morning, even just driving out in the street and all that good stuff. So, I'm the same as you. 
the, the vibe in the morning is so much different than the vibe in the afternoon. Yeah. And I always, I don't like afternoons. Like from <laughs> two to like five, I just want to take a nap. I want to just, I don't yeah. know. But I'd say there's something icky about the afternoons. Yeah. That, that just, uh, I, I don't like it as much as the morning. Everything's fresh and new. And, mm-hmm. and then the evening and, and night, it's more calm and peaceful. But there's something about... The, the that vibe. two to five frame, huh? Yeah, it's just the vibe in the I afternoon. I would just kind of bit. agree with that. Well, my energy drops. Yeah, so. and maybe it's more internal than, than mm. the world. But yeah, the morning's great. You get up and you have that first sip of coffee. and, and Yeah, it's also the bu- busiest time of day. So actually, um, I was just reading something about commuters. The morning commute is usually an easier commute. And the afternoon commute is the harder commute. Yeah. There's more people out, school, work. Yeah. You're stressed. Your energy is yeah. not fresh yeah. at that hour of the day. So that that time frame, and maybe that's part of it. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah, the morning commute. More anxiety are prone. Like straight to work. You know, they're 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 heading in yeah. one direction. They're very focused. After yeah. work, people run around after work, and there's a you know that that hustle and bustle of the day you're mixing into. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in the, in the morning, it's usually everybody's going in the straight. Yeah. Straight to one destination. You know, right, and it, your mind isn't clouded with the, all the events of the day yet. And I think that's, that's a too. big part of it because at the end of the day, people are frustrated. They've got stress from whatever areas yeah. of their life and they're driving and there's traffic and they're upset and they yeah. want to get home and relax and drink their wine or their beer <laughs> or whatever your thing is. That's me. When I get out of work, I just want to be home. Even yeah. if I have to go somewhere later on, I, just, I want to get home and just reset for a minute and just yeah. you know, pet the cat for a second and then and then think about yeah. like what else I have to do in the evening but um, yeah that's funny that, that good to have those that, routines yeah it is yeah. so um, for people that are interested in classes yeah. what's the best way to get in touch with you the best way is through the website so okay. I don't have a physical phone okay. um, but I have a website ovpoweryoga.com the schedule is live so oh, I cool. utilize mind body software which is basically manages all the classes oh, okay so you can log on there you can create an account it'll store all of your information and then you can sign up for classes so you can even sign up for if you want to take three classes in the week you can sign up for all of them and it'll sync to your Google Calendar oh, nice. it'll alert you um, and then when you show up to the studio, you just let the, the teacher know your name and they sign you in and, and that's it. That's so cool. every, you can pretty much do everything on your own. You can also walk into the studio. You can pay here. Um, you don't have to sign up through the website. Um, there's also an app you can download to your phone, MindBody app. Um, so you can even just do it all from the app and on your phone. So fairly simple, straightforward, not a whole lot of frills. But, um, and I'm just kind of looking at the schedule here. You have two, you have classes at noon on Saturday and Sundays, which is perfect yeah. for people. And, and you have a, a nice spectrum for, for NB. You have some 7.15 p.m. classes, yes, which is great. And you have some 5.45 for after work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 7.15 class, those are the Power Foundations classes, which I highly recommend. If you're newer, definitely come to those classes. Um, kind of get your, your foundation, your bearings. Yeah, nice. You have you have six a.m.s for the early risers <laughs> and nine a.m.s for the not yeah. so early risers. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a great spectrum of, of classes. And it is funny that you don't really need a phone to have a business anymore, do you? Because everybody, yeah. How often do people make phone calls anymore? Anyhow, yeah. yeah. There there is a there's a there's a phone number, but uh, yeah. I'm not. I don't advertise it too prominently. It is on some sure. of my contact stuff. Um, but everything's through the website, yeah. which is just it just makes it easier. Um, find out what it's about and see yeah. the schedule and sign up for classes. Yeah, you can see the class descriptions there, um, the kind of the story behind the studio, why I'm here, um, the schedule, teachers, awesome. all that good stuff, it's all there. Yeah, I and mean, Instagram, you can follow on Instagram, I'm really a big proponent of Instagram. Yeah. I, Facebook's a little overwhelming for me these days, so I'm just sticking to the one social media yeah. outlet. I, I think Instagram is kind of where, where more people are headed it's got less nonsense on there yeah yeah Yeah, so right now i'm actually running a a challenge it's called whole sweat 30 so um it's instagram slash studio challenge so it's just a 30-day challenge to practice three days per week in the studio minimum and then um every week i post some instructions on you post 
a photo of yourself doing some yoga or sweating yeah. or whatever the topic is that week and a little bit a little blurb about why yoga is important to you or what brought you to your mat um, or why you love to sweat or something like that. And then you tag the studio. And so we're all kind of playing along, which is fun. So you can learn about why people enjoy coming because we all come for a different reason um, and no reason better than the other. It's just different. So it's kind of cool to connect the community in that way. And and to keep it kind of uh, part of your life outside of class, you know, so that you stay connected to it and, 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 um, you know, sometimes just thinking about those things that make you feel good and you know, just remembering that you have them in your life is, is, is yes. good to get you through to the next time you can come in and, and just yeah. to kind of keep your eye on that, that thing that you have, you know. Absolutely. You know, as a, as a life coach also, I, I, I know we, we talked about that last time, yeah. but um, when you write things down, it becomes part of your yeah. memory, you know, and we learn in all different ways, but writing is such a great way to learn to make something solid in your body. And on New Year's Eve, I did this goal setting workshop and that's exactly what we did. We wrote our goals down, our intentions, our why, the things we achieved last year, why we achieved them, maybe the things we didn't achieve, why we didn't achieve them, all that kind of stuff. It all all rolls together. And um, I think it, you surprise yourself yeah. by something that happened to me when I started doing this um, every New Year's. I started doing this in 2012, but when I wrote it down subconsciously, I achieved it. Yeah. And so when I returned to it, I was like, oh, wow, a resolution I, I actually did. Yeah. You know? Hey, pretty cool. Good for me. Pat on the back, right? Heck yeah. Because that, that, that is uh, really important to, you know, we all have things that we want, but um, often we don't put the work in to get them so if you have you know something that is simple as just writing it down that helps you achieve that goal that's really cool yeah and it's interesting how that 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 writing it down and I I also find it kind of it releases it from my brain too I I quit thinking about it because now it's written down I don't have to remind myself I don't have to dwell on it it's always there yeah Um, and and yeah I I like that to to just have that thing that will you know, keep, yeah. me, keep me focused. Writing is powerful. I'm, I'm a big it proponent of, of writing stuff out. So Me too. I got too many notebooks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's the other end, right? You have too many calendars, too many agendas. You're That's like, oh, all right. I, I'd rather do too many things than, than not have enough to do. I can't imagine what I would want to be bored all the time. I, that yeah. sounds awful. <laughs> well, I think that you probably have the type of brain where you, you pick things up so that that's not happening. Um, you know, where at times where I used to feel, you said bored, and I just thought like just that tendency to feel bored or whatever, I've started to utilize that time. Like I realized like my brain's fried, yeah. you know, and I need to maybe sit still and like just just relax. Yeah. yeah. Um, instead that's of the, thinking the that I have end, to right? do something all the time. Yeah, that's uh, um, that's the other end of it is is um, knowing when to just take a break and, and, and give yourself a chance to relax. In yeah. fact, the one camping trip I went on, we were in the middle of a big moving job, and uh, my friend Alvin, we, we were helping his family, and and he says, "Hey man, you want to go camping?" And I'm like, "Yes, yeah. I need a I need a break of just <laughs> sitting in a car and 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 the peacefulness of and the, yeah. it was perfect." Anyhow, this was great. I think the studio yes. is awesome. I want Thank everybody you. to come down. I'm going to sign up for some yeah, classes come. and get down here come check and it get out. a sweat on. And yeah. um, any closing thoughts? Um, oh, come sweat with us. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. Build a puddle of sweat and yeah. <laughs> head on with your day. Come hang out with Laura. She's awesome. She's she's awesome to be around. She's got a good vibe, and and you walk out of here feeling great, and it'll change your life. Thank you. Thanks, James. You're welcome. All right. Till the next time, everybody. See ya.